you. Today on Animal Outtakes, come here, baby. Come here. From dachshunds with drive and Pomeranians with poof. Tunnel, go. Stop. Let's go. To smart shepherds and a collie with an impressive coat. So happiness is a beauty. Happiness is a beauty. Join us for this look at some unique breeds and find out why these animals are so special. Thanks for joining us for Animal Outtakes. Dogs are man's best friend, but not all dogs are the same. Today we're exploring the differences between canines big and small and why every dog is unique. So let's get started. My first pom 35 years ago, her name was Cinnamon. For Susan Groves, there's only one breed of dog for her, and that's the Pomeranian. Oh, God, if I could have a million, I would. Her two dogs, Shiloh and Lucy Lou, are both Palms, which is an affectionate nickname for the toy breed. But don't judge them just on their size. These small dogs have a rich history. What uh, in the wild were the Palms really bred for? Actually, they were bred for sledding. They sledding. Are, yeah, they are <laughs> part of little the, sleds. Yeah, you know, <laughs> they are part of the Spitz family. Hundreds of years ago, Pomeranians were actually a much larger dog, tipping the scales at around 30 pounds or so. But it was Britain's Queen Victoria that started the process of breeding them down to the smaller stature that we know today. What type of qualities would you say are very attributable? to a Pomeranian, perhaps versus somebody else? Well, um, of course, their hair. Palms are probably most well known for their abundant fur. These tiny dogs actually have a double coat with a soft, dense undercoat covered by a longer, coarser, textured top coat. All that hair requires some pretty regular grooming. Lucy. Um, she, she does have a full-blown coat if I let her, but because she's a little bit older, she likes her coat a little bit um, shorter because it is warm down here. But she's very, very cute when she's full, too. They also have tiny triangle fox-like ears and a feathered tail that sits high on their body and rests on their backs. They're very nosy. <laughs> they are. They get into everything. They want to know. They're very, they, they, you know, anything that you bring home, they're, they're into the bag, they're into the, you know, the box. They, they just want to be around you all the time. Um, so they're very curious. Yep, thank you. Another characteristic of these dogs is that they bark a lot. But that's a behavior Susan says can be kept in check. I think a lot of people have the misconception that, um, they're yappy. Well, they, yeah, they're yappy when you first walk in, and then they, you have to train them, you know, like any other dog. And they, they're settled down now. There are some medical concerns to watch out for, like a luxating patella, which is when the kneecap slides out of place. It's a problem common in smaller breeds of dogs, and more severe cases may require surgery. I don't allow this little one to jump, because if she jumps and falls the wrong way, she could break a leg. Um, Shiloh's got longer legs and knows how to handle a couch pretty well. Okay. Um, tracheas always, always put them on a harness because they're so tiny. You know, you could really do a lot of damage here. Heart murmurs, if they start to cough a lot as they get older, uh, which means sometimes the heart would be enlarged, you know. What about watch. breathing? Because they have a pushed in face, but they don't necessarily have a pushed in snout. Yeah, no problems with the breathing whatsoever. I've, I've had bombs on uh, airplanes. She's just really hyped, you know. She's, she's, she's just <laughs> well, she's <laughs> enjoying her debut today, yeah. yes. Why did you choose a Pomeranian as your dog of choice? Well, I had a neighbor that had one. Her name was Fluffy many years ago, and... Uh, my husband and I just fell in love with the breed, just too cute. And at the time, we were just married and lived in an apartment and thought it would be a really good match. But they're, they're good family dogs, and they're good to travel with. They're good for elderly people, you know. They're good with families and elder, you know. 
Um, a good condominium apartment dog. Or a home. Or a yeah, home, of mm -hmm. course. Yep. And uh, I just, uh, I don't know. I'm just very blessed to have them. I've always had them, and that's the only breed we'll ever have, I think. If you're starting out right away, you've got to put like a treat on each one. All right, let's go, Zena. Seven-month-old Zena is showing off Easy. her new skills on the agility Stop. course. Okay. While she's still learning the ropes, I, I, trainer Mark really says it's a good Zena. activity to get dogs like her started on early. Well, historically, the, the German Shepherd is a very loyal breed, uh, good for guarding, fam good family dog. Uh, but they're a working dog, a herding dog, working dog, so they need to have a job to do. Go get it. Good girl. Agility is great. It's a good work for the dog. Historically, German Shepherds have been used as protection dogs, working in law enforcement and search and rescue. Their high work drive is ideal in those positions, but it can mean disaster if not kept in check. So when you say working dog, now these, these guys, they need a job to do, right? I mean, you can't just get a shepherd and expect that you're going to leave it home all day. If you get a shepherd and you leave it at home all day, your, your blinds are probably going to be ripped up. And they're <laughs> going to be making their own jobs because that's what they do. They, uh, they really just need something to do or they make their own things up. So not all German shepherds are going to be search and rescue or police no, they're, dogs. No, they're a great family dog. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, is that you have to monitor what your energy level in your household is. Okay. And if that's a five and the dog's a ten, you got to get that dog down to a five by the end yeah. of the day. And by doing that, you need to do daycare, jogging, uh, -uh easy, walking. Mm -hmm. um, general walks are good. Basically, if you're an older person like me, 56, and you don't want to get up and run with the dog, mm -hmm. throw the ball, have it bring it back, throw the ball, have it bring it back. It needs just something constantly so to do. So that would be its job. Just as important as a job, it's vital the German Shepherds, or any dog for that matter, are socialized properly. Let's go. Whoa, yay, come on, hurry. Introducing these yes. dogs to new people, places, and things will help make them more confident and much easier to handle. If you don't get them socialized, they're going to become afraid of things. Right. And then they don't really know what they're supposed to protect or not. Right. So a dog will always feel that. But if you don't socialize the dog, the dog is going to be more reactive. When you have reactive and fear, then you have fear aggression. So now the black and tan is the more classic, but there are others. There's white German shepherds. There's the white shepherds. There's, there's uh, shepherds that have a little bit more brown. Longer haired shepherd. Uh, this is your classic German Shepherd. This is the German Shepherd that I love because that's the, what you normally think about when you say, say oh, that's a German Shepherd. Um, she has all the characteristics of being a really good dog. For Mark, those characteristics include being alert and agile. She has a good temperament and she plays well with others. Daycare, she's very good. She knows how to play well with the other dogs. She comes on a little strong. Right. But then she backs down to where she should be. Zena would make a great family dog, too. But Mark says it's important to monitor German Shepherds around young kids. Because you don't want her knocking them over. Right. These dogs love to mouth. They will chew your hands up if you let them because they just need something to chew. Sure. When they're full grown, German Shepherds can weigh between 80 and 120 pounds, with the males on the larger size. So, does that mean these dogs aren't suitable for the condominium lifestyle? Where they live isn't as important as what you do with them. Uh, there's a mis misconception that small dogs are the excellent apartment dogs. Really, the small dogs fit the criteria of what the condominium association mm -hmm. wants you to have. Um, if you have um, an apartment and you have your German Shepherd in an apartment, you need to have it crated while you're gone so that it has some downtime. You have to exercise that dog. You have to go to the dog park. The dog has to go to daycare. It has to work. Look. Ready? Here, go. What I like about a German Shepherd is that they'll really actually listen to you. And sometimes we think that the dog is like way out there. And it'll get way out there. And sometimes all you really have to do is be calm with them. And then eventually when she gets out of it and realizes that I'm going to take charge, then I can give her a command to do. The, the calmer you are and the more direct you are with an active breed uh, doesn't give them a mixed message. And they actually are better dogs that way too.
There's much more ahead on Animal Outtakes. I think uh, my dog Gunner is a, a winning wiener, yes. We'll take you to the Dachshund Derby to learn how these odd-looking dogs have won over so many people. Plus... A lot of grooming takes a place, lot of correct? It does. Meet this shaggy dog with a big heart. For thousands of years, we've been humans' best friend. You've been through a lot, and we've been right there with you. A dog is part of the family, a confidant, and a friend who always knows how to get into your heart. So what happens to our beloved companions when we can no longer care for them? This is why we've created Dante's Den, an innovative, state-of-the-art facility that will provide care for up to 100 dogs. Dante's Den is a community for joyful dogs. Millions of Americans face uncertainty when planning for the future of beloved pets who may well outlive them. Dante's Den is a charitable organization, so in whatever capacity you can, please lend your support so that we may continue this most wonderful work. Dante and I would like to thank you for watching and for also opening up your hearts to our wonderful community of joyful dogs. Learn about the many ways you could become involved by visiting dantesden.org. For me, it started with one hit of sardines. Oh, sardines. That's where I learned to bag. It was easy to score free fish. I mean, hey, with this dolphin smile, yeah, it's illegal, but I, no one cares. I had a monkey on my back, but I was jonesing for people food, hanging out under boats, dodging props and hooks, and doing dangerous stuff, stuff that uh, I'm ashamed to admit. Look, I know that I can kick this if people would just stop feeding me. Hi, I'm Marcia Panucci, founder of the Dante's Den Foundation. And I'm Ron Dixon, the executive director out at the Dens. Dante's Den has come a long way since its inception to where we are now. We've helped hundreds of dogs since we've opened, but now we need your help. We sure do, Marcia. Dante's Den needs great volunteers to help us feed, walk, and play with all of our furry friends. So come on out and enjoy our 50 acres of beautiful countryside where you can also feed miniature Holstein cows. And their babies. And hee-haw the donkey and buttercup a beautiful miniature horse if you would like to be a part of our joyful community of dogs please visit dantesden.org or call us toll free at 844-DANTES-DEN that's 844-366-8336 come on out today and see what makes us so special it's a drizzly day in Sarasota Florida but the cold, wet weather hasn't deterred some devoted sports fans. Today is the annual Wiener Dog Derby, with dachshunds from across the state racing in for a chance at glory. Miriam Thompson and Elizabeth Billings have entered their two dogs, Gunner and Pumpkin. Pumpkin ran in the first the first year they had the race. Pumpkin was a puppy and she raced and she did pretty well. But you can see she's put on some weight, so she's not going to do very she's well. She's not a contender. She's not really. No. I think uh, my dog Gunner is a, a winning wiener. Yes. Is he? Baby so. wieners. Has he done got a biking coat on? He has, but he was a big disappointment last year. Does that dog really have a fur coat on? At least Gunner will get style points for that great coat. Karen Slifker drove two hours to be here, hoping for her dog, Roxy, to defend her title. We hope she's last year's champion here. Oh, okay. You never know, Ruger, my mean one, she might. Roxy is the 2015 National Dachshund Racing League champion. It's a title Karen had never even imagined holding until an event was held near her home in Orlando. We entered her in a race a long time ago in Orlando, and she won. And then somebody came up to us, and I wish I knew who that person was, but she told us all about dachshund racing and that it's an actual thing. And she told us just to find different races, and we started putting her in. And at first she wasn't the best, but we kept working with her because we knew her potential, and she has over 30 titles now to her name. But Roxy has some competition from her own teammates. Ruger was adopted recently and has the makings of winning Wiener as well. We never expected her to race, and she would watch us practice in the backyard, 
and she won it in that race box, and now she's even beaten Roxy a few times in a few races, and she's actually the Georgia champion and number two in the nation. She came in second to her. Dachshund derbies date back to the 1970s, starting in Australia. But it wasn't until the early 90s that they gained popularity in the United States. While each race differs based on location, the concept is basically the same. Owners line up their dachshunds in the starting gate at one end of the track. Then when the gates open, they call them to the finish line, with the first nose to cross wins. It's a fun way to feature these delightful dogs. Um, I grew up with dachshunds, so I've always loved wiener dogs, and I think they have the sweetest personality. They have a personality that brings out the best in me. Um, they're very humorous, and they make you laugh, and they bring you up, and there's never a down moment. You know, training's a little difficult, but once you get past it, they're worth every bit of the love that they give me, and I give them. The Derby isn't just a young dog's game. We found a 10-year-old Doxy, also named Roxy, who was looking for glory and maybe a little redemption, too. Yes, yes. She, last year, she uh, won the first race. And she didn't come in, you know, second race, she stopped. Roxy's owner, Nancy, says her four-legged friend is more than just her pet. Oh, my gosh. She's my pet. I travel all over the place with her. Um, go up to Chicago a couple times, Virginia a couple times, and she's my uh, navigator. For her, there's no better breed than a dachshund. They're so lovable. I mean, they, they are. It's a dachshund lover's dream. Dogs of all shapes and sizes and their owners mingling and socialing over their shared love of these amazing dogs. And then there's the race, with spectators cheering on their favorite competitor for a chance to go home with perhaps the best prize of all, bragging rights. Up next, these are not couch potatoes. These really are active, very active dogs. A rare breed, the bearded collie comes bounding into our hearts when Animal Outtakes returns. For thousands of years, we've been human's best friend. You've been through a lot, and we've been right there with you. A dog is part of the family, a confidant, and a friend who always knows how to get into your heart. So what happens to our beloved companions when we can no longer care for them? This is why we've created Dante's Den, an innovative, state-of-the-art facility that will provide care for up to 100 dogs. Dante's Den is a community for joyful dogs. Millions of Americans face uncertainty when planning for the future of beloved pets who may well outlive them. Dante's Den is a charitable organization, so in whatever capacity you can, please lend your support so that we may continue this most wonderful work. Dante and I would like to thank you for watching and for also opening up your hearts to our wonderful community of joyful dogs. Learn about the many ways you could become involved by visiting dantesden.org. For me, it started with one hit of sardines. Oh, sardines. That's where I learned to bake. It was easy to score free fish. I mean, hey, with this dolphin smile, yeah, it's illegal, but hey, no one cares. I had a monkey on my back. I was Jones for people food, hanging out under boats, dodging props and hooks, and doing dangerous stuff, stuff that uh, I'm ashamed to admit. Look, I know that I can kick this if people would just stop feeding me. Monday on ABC 7 News at 7. It's a million people here anyway. So what difference does it make if for one month there's a million five? The Suncoast is the land of spring training, but could it soon be the home of the Braves? Find out what Northport is doing to bring the Atlanta team here and how the move could impact the area. I'm Alan Cohen. We'll have that story plus our roundtable discussion. Monday on ABC 7 News at 7. Your Suncoast News. We are here for you. On Animal Outtakes, every week, it's a new animal adventure. This week on Animal Outtakes, 
furry, fast, and full of energy. This is true puppy love. This is this is puppy love. We're checking out some unique breeds and learning what makes them so special. Watch Animal Outtakes this weekend on ABC7. On the next Black Almanac. As the numbers of New York rolled in, Secretary Clinton emphatically declared the race for the Democratic nomination is in the home stretch and victory is in sight. After the sound drubbing of Senator Sanders, can she now pivot and move on to the general election? First, there's Bernie and his legion of followers. Or the White House remains a dream deferred. Sunday morning at 7.30 on ABC7. So far, we've seen fluffy dogs with spunk, smart dogs with a job to do, and some dashing dachshunds. But for our next breed, it's all about the hair. Barbara and her husband Dean have spent nearly two decades loving these shaggy dogs. So tell us about a bearded collie. And I must tell you, the very first dog my husband and I had was a bearded collie. Um, loving, wonderful. Hmm? They are very loyal dogs to the owners of the house, who's ever in the house with them. They will be very loyal to them. The Bearded Collie is so named because of their magnificent double coat. The undercoat is soft, furry, and close, with a flat, shaggy outer coat. A lot of grooming takes a place, grooming. correct? It does, it does. It's every day, I do it every day. It takes me just an hour to do both of them. Not bad, but I've been doing it for 18 years. Daily brushing helps prevent any matting. Do they shed? No, they really don't shed, which is surprising yes. if you've had one. With, yes, with all that hair. With Everybody says the same thing yes. is, oh, they must shed it. They don't, because you do have to groom. Um, and if they if you don't groom them, they mat. So any loose hair sticks to their, sure. their mat, and that way they don't shed. For Barbara, the grooming is not so much a chore as a way to unwind. For me, it's better than taking yoga. Oh, it's sure. It's very relaxing. Uh, I don't think about anything. I just groom. And for me, it's, it's wonderful. Now, other than the one who is light-haired, we have three that could be triplets. Uh, <laughs> how do you tell them apart except for the colored bows? <laughs> you know, it's just like our children. If you have your children out in the middle of 150 people, you can spot yours immediately. We know exactly their markings. Beardies come in four colors, black, blue, brown, and fawn, and they all have white markings. When they are born and when they, uh, up until the first probably year, they stay a very dark black, the, the gray and white ones very dark and then over the course of the next year two years they begin to change and i've heard i think it's not until they're about three or four that they actually get their permanent color coat bearded collies are a herding dog hailing from scotland they were bred to herd sheep and still do to this day and it's interesting being a herding dog they will even here when we're out here with our grandchildren they will circle around them and try and herd them together as the kids are running and playing and, and things, they do herd other animals, ducks, chickens, uh, sheep. And uh, so they that instinct is in them. <laughs> Dylan is Canadian. He has come from a breeder in Canada. And uh, Marty has come from Brazil. The, uh, the interesting thing about beardies is because they're so such a small amount of bearded collies and small amount of breeders, they're very careful with their lineage and therefore they do bring a lot of dogs in from other countries so that they keep the lineage of the dog very clean uh, and they don't inbreed at right. all. Right, so the breeding is very controlled. Very much controlled. Now what about a personality? They are incredible. They are happy, they're called clowns, because, <laughs> yes. and they're actually called the bouncing, barking beardies because you will see too, they bounce constantly, they bark. They don't bark so much just at anything, but if you want to take them for their walk, they will bark and bark and bark until you get them out the door. These are not couch potatoes. No, These are really are couch? active, very active dogs that need a lot of running to get the activity out of them. For Barbara and the Beardies, it was love at first sight. 
because I've always rescued dogs. And my last dog, which was still alive when I got our first beardy, was a Chow Chow. Again, a long-haired dog you have to groom. It was one evening, we were sitting watching the Westminster Kennel Club dog show, and I saw this magnificent dog go by, and it was a bearded collie. I was totally taken by this dog. I called Dean and I said, come in and look at this dog. That's gonna be my next dog. Look, at they flow. They are joyful. They are just uh, happy, happy-go-lucky dogs. Every day, every minute, there's never a downtime where you say, oh, my little dog, he must not feel good today. They're always in a happy, clownish, joyful mood. Always. So happiness is a beardy. Happiness is a beardy, and happiness is having a beardy. <laughs> we'll be right back. You can watch full episodes of Animal Outtakes by subscribing to our YouTube channel. Just visit youtube.com slash animal outtakes. Introducing the all-new MySuncoast.com. MySuncoast.com has been completely redesigned and includes even more great content and features, including Marketplace, the area's most complete group of listings for local businesses, an all-new entertainment section with the latest news, events, and happenings from around the Suncoast, and your photo submissions. A brand new experience on your desktop or mobile device. The all-new MySuncoast.com. Just another way, we're here for you. At ABC7, it's all about being here for you. Introducing ABC7 News at 7 with award-winning investigative journalist Alan Cohn. In-depth reporting and debate on important issues and stories in our community. With a featured topic of the day and a live roundtable discussion with community leaders and newsmakers. Plus a quick recap of the day's top stories and weather. ABC7 News at 7, weeknights. Now more than ever, we're here for you, Suncoast. On your TV, on your computer, on your camera, on your smartphone, on your Apple Watch. And now you can get ABC7, your Suncoast News on Roku. Just go to MySuncoast.com and click on the mobile tab for a list of fast and free downloads that deliver ABC7, your Suncoast News on the go. Monday at 5 on ABC 7's Good Morning Sun Coast. Good morning, I'm Rebecca Vargas. And I'm Don Brennan. Telekinesis is no longer just the stuff of magic shows. How scientists at the University of Florida want to make mind control much more popular. That's Monday on Good Morning Sun Coast. John? Well, we're going to look at a nice, beautiful weekend of weather and a week ahead as well. We'll detail that forecast for you bright and early. Monday at 5 on ABC 7's Good Morning Sun Coast. We're here for you. Animal Outtakes is produced by Dante's Den Foundation, a nonprofit group dedicated to creating the best life for dogs. If you would like to learn more about Dante's Den, donate or volunteer, visit our website, dantesden.org. That's it for this week's episode. We hope you've enjoyed learning about these unique dogs. And maybe you've even changed your mind about some breeds. Join us again next week for another outstanding animal adventure. See you then. See it in the camera. <laughs>the White House remains a dream deferred. Sunday morning at 7.30 on ABC7. On your TV. On your computer. On your camera. On your smartphone. On your Apple Watch. And now you can get ABC7, your Suncoast News on Roku. Just go to MySuncoast.com and click on the mobile tab for a list of fast and free downloads that deliver ABC7, your Suncoast news, on the go. 
ABC7 is proud to present Line Dance Central. Now you can learn popular country and not-so-country line dances from the comfort of your own home. Just visit MySunCoast.com, click on Entertainment, and you'll be kicking up your boots or flip-flops in no time. Brought to you by the White Buffalo Saloon and Sunset Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. The all-new MySunCoast.com. Just another way, we're here for you. ABC 7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. 